Hi everyone. I wanted to record this video on a subject that I don't hear a lot of discussion about, but uh, that I think is very important for independent filmmakers to consider. And that is the idea of preserving or archiving your films. There's, a lot of, there's been a lot of discussion in the uh, film preservation world about digital archiving and the instability of digital formats you know, in, in traditional film archiving, um, film prints, you know, typically have a pretty long life if they're stored under optimal conditions. But digital archiving presents some very unique challenges that archivists are still coming to terms with because of things like changing file formats, um, technology that become, you know, that, that's needed to read these digital files that becomes obsolete. And, uh, you know, just, just basically the ever-evolving digital technology. It, it doesn't guarantee that you'll be able to access your projects in the future. When I, was, uh, when I began making digital movies back in the early 2000s on mini-DV tape, uh, the, the one advantage there was that you could output your final project, and if you were editing in Final Cut, for example, you could output your final file back to the mini-DV tape for storage. Now, there are, of course, problems with that if the DV tape becomes unreadable, if there's dropouts, you know, or if, if there's some other corruption on the tape, or if you're not able to get access to a uh, camera or, or mini-DV player in order to play it back, uh, then, you know, potentially it's going to become that much more difficult to even access your project. But once uh, camcorders made the switch over to shooting on digital files, you know, with hard drive based cameras, SD card based cameras, uh, you know, smartphones, for example, this problem became even more of an issue because now everything you're dealing with are, are you know, digital files and it's very easy for those to become um, you know, unreadable or corrupted if if they're on a hard drive that fails, for example, or if they're in a codec that is uh, no longer supported by the software that you're using, you may not be able to open the files at all. So my, my point here is that it's, um, you know, this is something independent filmmakers have to think about, is how are you going to be able to access your movies, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road? Now, of course, if you're putting them up on YouTube, that's a, that's, I, I think a lot of people think, well, that's a, ten, that's a, uh, th that they'll always be there, right? They think, well, if it's up on YouTube, you know, YouTube is forever, it'll always be there. Well, we don't know that. You know, it's always possible that um, videos could get deleted for any reason. Uh, it's always possible that, you know, you, you know if, you, if, you, if YouTube went away, for example, um, then what would happen to all the films that are on there? And uh, similarly, if you're, you know, burn, if you're not burning them to any kind of, um, or if you're, if you're putting like the files onto either a, uh, like a, a DVD-ROM for storage, or if you're putting them onto an external hard drive, if anything happens to that storage format, then those files are gone as well. Um, I don't think, this is not, there's not really a, a, you know, an easy answer to this question. It's, like I said, it's something that in the film preservation world, archivists are still dealing with and kind of having to come to terms with of keeping uh, digital files and digital video uh, constantly accessible for the future. But I do think it's good as filmmakers for us to think about this and to think about what we can do to at least um, uh, reduce the risk of losing access to our own films. Uh, some of the things that I do, I keep backups of all the files that, and the project files as well, the editing project files. I keep backups of all those on um, two external hard drives so that if one fails, I'll, I will have another uh, that, I can, that I can pull from. But even with that, you know, it still requires me to have the computer and the software to be able to open those programs. For some of my earliest uh, digital movies that I cut using... Um, uh, iMovie on my Mac on, on my old MacBook, um, you know it's getting much more difficult for me to access those. I mean, just to give you an idea, the project files are on 
old FireWire drives, and that's the you know FireWire format, uh, the, 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 the type of FireWire connection that's no longer supported. So I can really only plug those into my old MacBook. And the last time I did that, I found it to be, um, you know, a little, a little unstable in terms of opening those project files in iMovie. And of course, if the MacBook fails, you know, there's there's the there's the uh, problem there. The hard drives could fail, but also the MacBook itself, which is almost 15 years old at this point. You know, if the MacBook fails, then I can't. I, I'll have no way of reading from those drives anymore, and, and I won't be able to open those project files anymore. So all I'll have left are the um, files that I managed to, to pull, the mixed down, you know, uh, I believe it's a QuickTime format that I have on another hard drive, and which I've used to upload those short films to YouTube. And this is all very convoluted, but, you know, this is the kind of stuff that you run into when you're going you know, 10, 15, 20 years down the road with, with making movies. And um, so some of the things, you know, that I try to do now is just try to keep backups in as many places as possible without it becoming too cumbersome. You know, I, I can't see having three or four hard drives necessarily, but I feel pretty confident that if I have two, you know, if one of those fails, then I can hook the other one up and, and pull it from there. I find that that might be a good... Um, solution, uh, at least for now. But again, in, you know, at some point down the road, uh, all these hard drives could fail. I may not have a computer or the software capable of reading the files anymore. Uh, and, I, and as I say, I wouldn't think of YouTube as any kind of a permanent archival medium. Uh, there's just too many different, you know, with any of these sites. I mean, it's not just YouTube. I'm just mentioning that because I think that's the one most people use. But you know, there's just no guarantee that these sites will be around forever or that the, f that the, the video files, you know, won't get deleted or whatever, uh, get pulled down or anything like that. And if that happens, if that's your only copy, then it's gone. And we saw something like this, you know, a few years ago with MySpace, with MySpace Music. And I guess MySpace Film, too. There was a MySpace Filmmakers um, page where people could upload their their uh, videos and as far as I know all that's been wiped I know the music uh, the music pages were wiped and I read you know in an article about that that the files that were had been uploaded to the MySpace pages were lost as they were I, I guess um, you know migrating the migrating the website over or deleting some of the old pages or whatever and the point is that the the files um, actually got uh, lost in that process. And I believe in I believe in the case of MySpace Music, someone independently had archived at least a lot of the recordings, the, the music that was uploaded to that. So in that case, there was, there was a, a bit of a, you know, just through, through a sheer bit of good luck of somebody uh, backing up some of those. Uh, they, they were preserved, but otherwise they would have been lost forever. And I could imagine something like that happening with, you know, if, if anything like that ever happened with the major U um, um, video platforms like YouTube, you know, it would mean a lot of lost videos. Now, one site, and I'm, I'm kind of just putting this out because I'm, I'm also just curious what other uh, independent filmmakers think about this issue and how you deal with archiving and preserving your own films. You know, one thing that occurs to me is a website like the Internet Archive could be useful for uploading backup copies of projects because they can be downloaded. They can be uploaded there and then uh, also downloaded again, I believe in full resolution. So there's, you know, it is in a way like it's a, 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 its own little archival, um, you know, a little alternative, I guess, where you don't necessarily have to uh, direct people to watch your movies there, but you could upload them and keep them as a, you know, as a way of archiving it. And, and that way you could, uh, you know, go back and download those files if you, if they ever get lost. Um, but again, I, I mean, none of this, none of this is guaranteed, right? I mean, I, I have to say that's, that's the big um, concern that there's no, there is no 100% guarantee that this, these things will always be accessible. So this is why this is just an ongoing question um, of how, how do you take all the steps that you can you know, reasonably to ensure that you'll still have access to your 
to your movie projects down the road. So I'm curious to hear from filmmakers on this subject. I'm curious what thought you've given to archiving and preserving your own movies, your digital, both your original um, camera files, but also the project templates that you're editing in. You know, if you wanted to go back in and make some changes to a project, you know, would you still be able to open up that editing program and make the changes there? Do you still have access to that? And if so, how are you uh, storing those those saved projects project files? Um, I'm also curious if you've ever had the experience of losing a film because you you didn't back it up or preserve it. You know, I, it's it's a little um, it's kind of funny actually. Some of my earliest movies that I made back when I was a kid shooting on the um, eight millimeter videotape, you know, with the, the Sony camcorder. Uh, when I was done with a project, I would pretty much have to edit, either edit in camera or, um, you know, edit to a, a VHS tape. But in, in either way, when I was done, I would put the final project out onto a VHS tape to store it. And I still have everything I backed up like that. I still have, and I can actually still play them on VHS. But the funny thing is, I I realized that back when I first started making these movies... Um, you know, I only had so much, so many of the eight millimeter Sony um, uh, video tapes that I could that I could record on in the camera, and sometimes I would get so excited to make another movie that I would actually record over an, a, a, one of my old movies before I'd had a chance to back it up to VHS because I was just excited to be making another one, and I wouldn't, you know, you know if there are a, f- a few times where I didn't actually take the uh, step of backing it up on VHS, and as a result, those tapes were wiped. The original, um, you know, tapes, I mean, were wiped, and the projects were lost that were on them. So I actually did lose a few of my films that own, my, uh, my own films that way. But, uh, you know, I think as, as everything becomes increasingly digital, and there's incre- all these diff- well, it's totally digital now, but I mean, uh, as, as things become increasingly complicated with different uh, programs and codecs and file formats, I think it's, it's also going to get increasingly uh, difficult to try to ensure that all of this digital video will always be accessible and playable and retrievable. Anyway, I'm curious how, you know, filmmakers, how you deal with this issue, what thoughts you've given to this, and, uh, you know, I think it might be an interesting discussion if you want to leave some comments in the, uh, in the, in the comment section below. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you later.